in its own way. Here, a female leopard uses the suffocation method on an adult impala. One would expect it to put up more of a fight, but it is probably in a state of deep shock. The leopard's teeth are up to 32 millimeters long. Here, a female has clamped the windpipe of the impala and waits patiently for it to drop. Because this impala is small, the leopard uses the neck grip the disadvantage is that its distress calls could attract unwanted competition. The leopard cub uses his incisors to pluck the hair from the impala carcass. The leopard is the only predator known to do this. But of all the predators, the leopard also has great strength. With short legs to give them a low center of gravity, they regularly hoist prey equal to, or even exceeding, their own weight. Soft pads are especially critical to stalking predators. It is said that a leopard can place its hind foot exactly in the footprint left by the front. In this way, it lessens the chance of alerting its intended victim by snapping a twig or rustling the grass. The leopard's paw is suited to life in the trees. Very flexible, it molds itself to the branch for a better grip. Here, a leopard cub develops dexterity. This is play, but later in life that skill will serve a practical purpose. See how he holds the impala's head with its dangerous horns safely out of the way. Paws also have much more mundane uses, covering the scent of a kill to keep competitors away. This could also be used as a scent marking technique. Sharp claws are also useful when climbing trees. Watch how this leopard uses its claws to hook the piglet out of its hole. The monitor lizard's scaly hide is however too tough for even these claws to penetrate. Further up the paw is the equivalent of our thumb, the dew claw, used for hooking and clamping. That the ability of the predator to adapt becomes critical, and the leopard is surely the most adaptable of them all. This young male survives by catching catfish in a drying pool. And in this struggle for survival, 